That's so good. Oh, hey guys! Welcome to our home and to our Sunday morning service. I'm Mikella, and normally we would have our announcements now, but we're actually going to save them for the end of the video. So let's get right into worship. All right, Jesus, I thank you for everyone who is tuning in online right now, and I just ask that right now as we gather, gather into this time of worship together that every word would be spoken and unified in the spirit, even though we're all separated right now, that we're all unified in the spirit right now. That every word of this song would just speak truth. Every word of this song would just prophesy into the spirit. And it would even help our hearts and that it'll deplete all anxiety and worry right now as we worship and we, as we fix our eyes on you. In Jesus' name.
Aloha, everybody. Thank you so much for coming inside our house and joining us today. We are so blessed that you guys could all join us and we can, we can see you in your living rooms, you know, like Eric Takahara. You notice I had to change the cup because last week you said I was endorsing another company. So look, see, no endorse, endorsing the Holy Spirit. That's right. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, welcome. Good to have you guys here with us. Yeah, we're just so blessed that you're here. I think we're all making adjustments. I think by now you've figured out how to click on this link and our, our uh, online service. And in fact, I mean, Pastor Cal has actually become sort of a social media expert in this last <laughs> couple of weeks. So it's a blessing that we're all coming together and making the adjustments. It's been a blessing. Yeah, I used to hate Facebook, but now... I only semi hate. Well, you're not supposed to hate, so yeah. I was gonna say I don't know if you like it yet. So yeah, you're you're on your way though. You're on your way. Yeah, but we're so blessed that you would join us via Facebook or YouTube, or you know whatever. We just are so glad that you can be a part of our Ohana for all of our MGMC Ohana. We just love you guys. We miss you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, not getting together. Um, yeah, we just miss everybody. But on the other hand. This has been a blessing from the Lord, hasn't it? Amen, amen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think we, we all feel the same way. We, we definitely miss all of you, but at the same time, this has been a blessing in disguise as well. So. Yeah, you know, and you know, our reach has been almost 10 times more than what it is on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And that's because of, of you out there, amen. passing it on to other people. And for all of you first time guys who are watching us or you're new to our church family, we just love you guys and thank you so much for giving us a Sunday morning to be with us or whenever you're watching this. Yeah, amen. Yeah. So today, as we kind of transition here, we wanted to do something a little bit differently. And what are we calling today's whole theme? Today is the family edition. Yes, <laughs> and it is all about family. And because in this time, we're all coping with coronavirus, but we don't have to just cope. It can be a time to connect as well. And so we wanted to show some of the families of what they're doing and, and how you can relate to all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we dive right into it, I wanted to share with you a scripture. And it's so fitting. I'm excited about this scripture. It comes from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 to 25. It's two verses, and it's packed full of truth that I believe is, it was not just for then, it's for now mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely. And it says this, discover creative ways to encourage others and to motivate them toward acts of compassion, doing beautiful works as expressions of love. This is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together as some have formed the habit of doing because we need each other. In fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and urge each other onward as we anticipate that day dawning. You know, wow. this passage is so fitting. I think in this time of social distancing, the tendency and temptation is to pull away and to try not to connect with people. I don't know about you, but yeah. when I go shopping, I'm not sure how to engage with people because I know them, but I don't know where they're at with the whole COVID-19. And so this verse is so, is so helpful, discovering creative ways of how do we connect with each other? How do we motivate one another? How do we encourage each other to compassion and love? And so- You know, you know at our church building, they close, they close the, the dog park, right? Close mm -hmm, by. Mm -hmm. So. One of our neighbors, they just started meeting together in front of our church. And all these, they keep their social distances. <laughs> but there's like six dogs all gathering together. And, and it's become kind of a dog community. Wow. None of these people are, you know, regular attenders uh, of MGMC. But they've been gathering together and they encourage one another. And so they saw our sign for Kupuna Kids. Yeah. And so one of the guys said, hey, I'm in. And then next thing you know, he's talking to all the other dog guys. Oh my gosh, wow. <laughs> and they're, they're doing exactly this. That is amazing. That is amazing. They, you know, these dog guys, they're creative. They're, they're social distancing themselves, but they're not socially disconnecting themselves. No. And I think that's something that we want to encourage you to do is that not just, we have to do the social distancing for sure, 
but you don't have to disconnect from one another. Yeah. And you can find creative and better ways to connect with each yeah. other. I love that, that, yeah. that story. That's a great example. Yeah, but if you live someplace else, don't bring your dog to our church. Okay, we get enough right Oh, now. yeah, we're not trying to become a dog park. <laughs> no, no, we don't, we don't want to do that. Unless, of course, you want to make monetary uh, donations. By all means, go uh, ahead. <laughs> um, but no, so in light of the family edition, we wanted to show you guys some of the video clips from our families in all walks of life. From young families to families with adult children, families with various seasons of life. What are they doing to cope with the coronavirus, but also what are they doing to connect with one another? Mm. And we wanted to show you guys just the real life reality of what's going on and how they're overcoming these challenges. So the first family we have is the Yoshidas, you know, Pastor Ron Yoshida. He has actually become a modern day <laughs> social media guru and in putting out these songs, which is amazing. He's a celebrity, he's a celebrity. He is a celebrity. He was already a celebrity, but he's gone a whole nother level now in social media. But we wanted him to get a little bit of, of, uh, of a preview of what they're doing. They have adult children, they have grandchildren, and we wanted you to enjoy of what are they doing to cope, but also connect in their family. So enjoy that. Hi, I'm James Hi. C. Uh, Pastor Daniel wanted us to share what we've been doing as a family during this isolation so um you know you just been uh you can start what what you been doing i've been working from home um remotely um keeping in touch with my staff through zoom and other meeting platforms like that and yeah. and having meetings with my boss and um trying to get people set up with telehealth because because i do behavioral health um, so it's been kind of stressful and a lot of long hours, but yeah. that's what we've been doing. Trying to so, take breaks. Yeah, and then when we take breaks, we, we can go walking, kind of nice, keeping our distance, you know, from other people, not between us, but, you know. And uh, I think the other thing is we get to call, um, yeah, we get to... Oh, be in touch with the family yeah. more? Yeah, like who? Like, oh, like Aaron? Yeah, in fact... Oh, in fact, Aaron's on the phone now. Here he is. <laughs> hi, everybody. Say hi. He's in San Diego. All right. Staying safe. Staying at home. All right. Yeah, staying in his house. And of course, I get to talk, and we get to talk to our grandchildren right here. Look at them. Say hi. Hi. Aww. Hopi, say hi. Hey, Gracie, say hi. Come say hi to Papa. And where's Hopi? Hopi. Hopi, come. Oh, where's Hopi girl? <laughs> huh? Where is she? <laughs> Say hi, Papa. Oh, hi, Papa Hi, Papa Hi, Hi, Hopi. That's the neat thing. We get to we get to use technology now and talk on the phone. So, Aaron, you want to say something? Too, you too, son. Alrighty. Well, All right. anyway, that's about it. So I wanted to keep it short. Okay. God bless you guys. Take Bye. Care. Bye. And so next up, we have our young families, and that's the Logans. You got a little bit of a preview from them last week, but we wanted to go even deeper in just peeling back the layers of revealing to you how do you as a young family cope and connect with one another with young children, and what are they doing? Um, you know it. You got the Yoshidas where they have time and they're able to FaceTime with their adult children, their grandchildren, yeah. their grandparents. But then you have young families and they have no time now. They, they can't drop them off at school. There's no child care. They're doing everything. And so what are they doing to cope and connect with one another? We. Hi. No, I. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi. We the Wogans and welcome to our home. What's your name? My name is Wendry. Okay. My name is Judah. My name is Karis. Hi, I'm Marion. And we wanted to share with you about wow. some things that we wow. miss from being stuck wow. here. And also that we love. Landry, mm. what is one thing that you love about being home? I love being 
home to ride scooter. What is one thing that you miss? I miss Friday for cook. You miss going to church, yeah. All your buddies, huh? Aaron and Levi, Logan, <laughs> you miss them. Okay, don't pick your nose. Do you know what is one thing that you miss? What do you miss? Something that I miss. Oh, sit nicely. Something that I miss. Two recesses. So mommy doesn't give you two recesses, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and what is one thing that you love? Something that I loved was building a lot no, like of this. stuff on Minecraft. Okay, yeah. daddy. Well, one thing that I miss is being able to go places, a lot to eat, take these kids out, yeah. let them run around freely. One thing that I love, we get a chance to be together. We've had a lot of family hikes and just enjoying each other. One thing that I miss is I miss people. I, I'm so thankful for technology, but I do miss being able to see a lot of people. But I do love being home with Judah being able to teach what? him. I love that we're just trying to find our new normal. It's very hard, it's very stressful. What? These days feel like an eternity, yet they just go in, in the blip of an eye. But that's it. This is our crazy family. We love you. The end. Every time I see the Logan boys, I laugh. I gotta tell uh, yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and Uncle Ronnie. Mm -hmm. You know, Uncle Ronnie's so smooth. He's good, he's good. <laughs> uh, and Aaron is Mr. Smooth. Good job, guys. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we're so excited because that's part of God's kingdom inside of all of us, that we get to be ohana with each other. And I think that's why this family edition that we're having with each other is so special, but the key is how do we connect in even deeper ways with one another, like what the Hebrews passage talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we wanted to address that tension. I think everyone's experiencing that tension. How do you connect with each other and cope with this coronavirus? And so we wanted to hit it head on and, and put it, the ball in your court, so to speak, and, and ask the Lord and ask your family members, ask the people around you, what can you do to connect better? And to help us with that, Galatians chapter 6, verse 2 just drives it even further. It says this, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. This is the law of Christ, is being able to bear one another's burdens, carry each other's burdens. And, you know, this is a time where everybody's on the news, everyone's on social media. The temptation and tendency in social media is to compare with each other. And, and eventually compete with each other. But that's not the time. This is not the time for competing or comparing. This is time for completing each other. You know, and that's what we want to encourage you to do. Mm -hmm. As you're seeking to connect with one another, it's not a compete. It's, it's to complete one another. And so we want to encourage you, what are some of the ways and what are some of the tips? I know you're sharing with us um, and the leaders some practical tips to not just cope, but connect. And you've been doing that with our family as well um, via the online platform. And I mean, so you're, again, you are the modern day social media guy. You're sending people <laughs> links yeah, yeah. and videos and setting up <laughs> webinars for all of us to be a part of and uh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, actually I learned this from Ed Silvoso, Ed and Ruth Silvoso. And um, what, what they were doing is getting, and they are grandparents. So all of their kids live on their own. They have their own children. And, but he said, we need to connect with each other during this time. And so he, they would all meet together, um, I don't know if it was once a week or every day, mm. just for a brief period of time, just to connect with each other. Well, you know, I, I took that idea and I said, well, let's do that for our family. You know, all of you guys are on your own. You have your own families. And we are rejoicing in that. But, you know, we usually get together every other week mm -hmm. and we haven't been able to do that. And so we said, well, let's just get together via Zoom. And we brought the whole family together. Of course, the little kids were so overjoyed seeing each other. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this, this, it's good that you bring that out because I think people like yourselves who are thinking, yeah, that would be awesome. It takes a long time just getting everybody <laughs> to, to, to converse because it's through the computer, it's chaos, it's a lot of fun. 
I think it took 15 minutes to even hear what you had to say. I, 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 the first week, I think it took half hour. Because <laughs> we had our two little guys, you know, they're both three years old, and they're, they're looking at the camera going, ah, ah, mm. <laughs> and, and they're doing all of this, you know, to, and, uh, on the camera to each other, mm -hmm. and the rest of us are watching and waiting. Yeah, no, it, was, it was pure entertainment. It was awesome. <laughs> um, but so everybody gives grace, mm -hmm. you know, because we're not putting on a show. Yeah. And they hadn't seen each other for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so the cousins just was all trying to re uh, reconnect with yeah, each other. Yeah. And, um, and, and this past time, what we did was, you know, I learned, uh, Ruth Savos is coming with a new book, um, Faith Building Stories. Mm. And she just talks about how her mother shared stories with her as she was growing up. And that's what she did with her children. And now her children are doing it with her, their grandchildren. And, and so I said, well, let's start sh sharing stories. So I shared a story of how God provides, you know? Yeah. And it was so powerful. Well, it's, it's story time with Abba. That's what we're, we're saying. It. It's, it's, the kids were actually quiet. That's why I was like, this is story time with Abba. They're not interrupting. They're not trying to jump in and take yeah. it away. Yeah. You, you I was amazed. Job. Although Kara said it went too long. Well, I mean, oh, in our minds, oh, but you're, you're a grandfather. You can do whatever you want. Uh, well, so. Yeah, because yeah. I was enjoying it. I don't know if the kids were <laughs> I was enjoying it. But anyway, it was, but it was so much fun uh, to connect in like, the, uh, like that. And, you know, uh, and, and, you know we want to just talk to the kids um, one day about how Joy and I met, you know, and just sharing our walks of faith. And because a lot of times our kids never know these kinds of things, you know, and thought, might as well share now. We're going to tell you a story of how Mimi and Abba met. Mimi's going to tell the story because Mimi always tells it best. Yeah, continue, continue. So we were in the same class. Second grade. This is Liu's class. Which class? This is Liu. In 1962. How old was she? Huh? How old was me and Abba? We must have been seven years old. Yeah. They were seven? We were in the same class. Wow. What did you like about each other? I liked him because he was funny. What? That's it? <laughs> What's that? oh. <laughs> oh. What about his good looks? <laughs> 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 so it still worked out for Mimi and Abba how we met and we got married. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> you can still connect heart to heart, even on a Zoom call. Um, but it's not just you and mom talking. You're letting every grandchild share what, what they've been doing, which I thought was awesome. You know, um, uh, each kid had a little story to share, yeah. which is great. So. <laughs> It's not, it's not time for the grandparents to lecture or to come down and share how bad the world is by any means. Anyway, it was, it was a great time yeah. to be together. No, yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. So uh, just a couple of discussion questions. We heard really good feedback from last week that a lot of you, right after that service, you went and, and talked together as families or uh, had different conversations with different people. And so we have two discussion questions for you. And the first one is this, is that what's the challenge or the challenges that's keeping you from connecting with others? You know, what is it that, that's keeping you from others? Is it a fear of technology? Is it you're just a little bit hesitant or you're really just anxious? You're scared about what's going on with the coronavirus. It's important for you to just identify that but then not just staying to that, but then asking, but Laura, what are you saying about that? What are you saying to me about this fear, about this challenge that you're experiencing right now? It just helps for you to verbalize that with one another. Again, it edifies the whole body of Christ. And you're able to just share where are you at and what are the challenge or, challenges you're facing right now? Mm -hmm. Amen. And, um, and then what are ways that I can creatively encourage and connect with my family, with the people around me? What are some ways that I can creatively do that? Um, one of the things you do with your family, with the kids, is that you ask two questions every day. What are those two questions? Yeah, you know, at, around our family dinner table, we just share, well, it's three now. We added on, what am oh. I thankful for, that, oh. what God did today? Uh, but so the first one is, what is something I love today? What is something I learned today? And what is something I'm thankful 
to the Lord today. And uh, we're able to do that. Uh, but in light of what you're saying about Creatively Connect, you know, we're, we're in the car picking up the breakfast and lunch that the DOE is providing. And so what Aaron and I have decided to do is that this morning I'm driving the kids. Well, we're going to do our spa time in the car because you got to wait a long time to pick mm -hmm. up your meal. And so they'll do their spa and we'll share in the car. What does the Lord want them to do for that day? And it's been it's been an amazing thing. It's a great mm. experience. So, mm. you, know, yeah. you wanted to make an intentional effort every week. And, and for those of you watching online, to give everyone an opportunity to reach out to the Lord. And, and we've, we've heard such great stories, such great feedback of some of you repeating after um, Pastor Cal's prayer and you've given your life to the Lord. And so again, we don't wanna miss out on that opportunity. And so, um, yeah, what has the Lord laid on your heart in light of this invitation? Well, you know, um, the key is aloha. It really comes down to experiencing God's aloha. Because what we're talking about here is expressing aloha with our family, expressing aloha with our neighbors. But how do you get that aloha? You know, um, and because I know within myself, I have enough struggles of my own and challenges of my own when people are feeling like, where's the next paycheck gonna come? You know, are we gonna have enough food? Are we gonna have enough toilet paper? You know. Um, What's happening to our state, you know, um, and uh, is our state going to be safe? You know, and we get angry and all these things that's happening. Where's the aloha? You know, because I look inside of me and I look at all the stresses that's happening. Uh, it's real easy now to turn to alcohol. It's real easy to turn to drugs, you know, and the alcohol is going, consumption is going way up, alcohol mm -hmm. sales. Um, uh, drugs are increasing, Drugs, uh, drug uses, usage is increasing, and you're hearing about domestic violence. Well, where do we find this kind of peace and love inside of our hearts? And maybe you're not one that's going to go crazy like that, but deep inside there's an unsettledness. There is just a, a lack of peace and anxiety. And I just want to share with you that that uh, what the scriptures say here, this is from 1 John chapter 4, verse 7, and this is from the Passion Translation. And he says this, Those who are loved by God, let his love continually pour from you to one another. Why? Because God is aloha. God is love. Everyone who loves is fathered by God and experiences an intimate knowledge of Him. The one who doesn't love or doesn't have aloha has yet to know God, for God is aloha. The light of God's love shined within us when He sent His matchless Son into the world so that we might live through Him. This is love. He loved us long before we loved Him. It was His love, not ours. He proved it by sending his son to be the pleasing, sacrificial or offering to take away our sins. And I wanna say this to all of you out there, um, and you are here in our house. I mean, I really am feeling like you're right here in our house, that the secret to all of this, yeah, is experiencing God's aloha for yourself. You cannot, it's not because your parents were Christians or your parents went to church, or even you went to church. It's experiencing God's love for yourself, His aloha for you. And you say, how do I get the aloha inside of me? Well, it comes by me opening up my heart and inviting aloha kiakua, inviting the God whose name is aloha to come inside your heart. You see, the difference between Christianity is that it's not a bunch of rules and regulations. What Christianity is, is Christ inside of us. Because you can do all the rules and regulations. You can follow the Bible up and down. But you know what? That's not going to change your heart. And the key to what we are saying is that God came to change our hearts. This was the new covenant. If you don't change your heart, no matter what you do, no more love. So how do you get that? You get that by saying, okay, God, I give up. I cannot do it my way anymore. And it's not a bad thing to say, I give up. All of the greatest disciples had to say, I give up. Mother Teresa had to say, I give up. 
Billy Graham had to say, I give up. The greatest saints of all time said, I give up. And say, God, I give up. I cannot do it. On my own, I'm a sinner. I don't have aloha. And so I ask you to come into my life. And you know when he does that? He puts that seed of aloha inside of us, his presence. And he begins to grow more and more and more. And so I want to invite you right now to open up your heart to the God whose name is Aloha, Aloha Kiaku. And so if you would pray with me right now and just close your eyes, you can repeat after me if you want to receive our God. Dear Lord, I open up my heart and I say I give up. I cannot do it on my own. I look at my problems and my issues and I end up getting so worried I don't know where the answer is going to come from. So I give up. Come inside my life. Come inside and take over my heart. Give me a new heart now. Enter into my life in a new way. And I receive you now. And forgive me and cleanse me of all my sins. Because I don't want to do it my way. I want to do it your way. And so I receive you now, Jesus. I receive you now, Father. You are my Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you believe in your heart that God loves you and is with you, He's there. He's inside of you. And you know what? We love you. If you prayed that prayer, if there's believers around you, have them baptize you. You know, they just can come sprinkle water on you. And then later on, when churches are open, you can get baptized in a, in a church. You can join our church. Just get baptized, okay? They can just say, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then, Daniel, what else can they do if they accepted the Lord today? Yeah, you know, I love this message, God is love. And, and we want to reach out to you. We, feel, we really do feel like you came to this house and spent time with us. And so we would love for you to reach out back to us. And so there's a number of ways you can do that. If you're watching via Facebook, you can just message us. And we want to respond to you and reach out to you. Or if you're watching uh, via YouTube, you can click the link and that's going to lead you to our MGMC website. And you can email us there because we want to respond to you. I mean, we, we want to be able to spend time with you to just celebrate with you, but also to pray for you and help lead you in the way of the Lord that talking about this love, that God wants to come in and enter more of his love into your life and your family, your community, and, uh, and for the rest of the world. Amen. We also want to invite you to come and connect with us on a Tuesday night where every Tuesday night we're going to be joining together face to face. Well, not in person, but face to face via Zoom on a Zoom call. And we're all going to come together and, and we're going to come together and connect and pray and fellowship and just join up together. I think this is a time where we're not just watching an online service, but we're engaging with one another. And I want to personally invite you to come out and click on the link, go to our website. There'll be a link there. You can click on it and you can join up with us on that Tuesday night. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today and coming inside our house. And I really pray that you will be encouraged to continue to meet together in your families, you know, and beyond. And watch what God is going to do. God is going to transform your family, even during this time. Yeah? Amen. Amen. Well, this has been a great time with all of you. Next week is Easter, so we're looking forward for you to be yes. celebrating along with us. It's going to be a great, great Easter service. Amen. Jesus is alive and he makes a difference. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Awesome. You guys have a great day. What another amazing message with Pastor Kel and Pastor Daniel. Thank you to everyone for watching. And we're going to close this time with a few announcements. First of all, we want to say thank you to everyone who's been generous during this time and that you can continue to give of your tithes and your offerings in three different ways, either online or you can mail in your checks to MGMC or you can stop by the office yourself. Secondly, Pastor Marion has a message that he'd like to share with us. Hey MGMC, just got back from delivering the Kapuna kits. We want to thank you for your donations. When I was talking to them at Nani Kapono Protestant Church, they told me that our donations help feed over 250 families. This is huge. It's a great time to give. It's a great time to come together. We want to thank you. We're so blessed. 
I'm so blessed to be a part of this family. Thank you for all, all of you who gave. Lastly, we'd like to close up these announcements with a special health tip from our health expert, Auntie Sandy. Okay, so one of the most important um, things that we can do is to actually um, practice social distancing. So to practice six feet apart from the next person, stand two lengths away from each other, two hand lengths, arm lengths away from each other because the virus are actually droplets in the air, which we don't see. But so it's important to stand that distance apart from e each other so that there is no way that we can be affected or hopefully no way or someone else may be affected too. All right, well, that's it for our announcements. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to leave us a comment or send us a message because we'd love to hear about how these messages have been for you and your family. We will see you next week for our online Easter service. Until then, have a great week.